So the first thing we will do today, it's we will take your ideas, you will form groups of three to five people, and you will have a business idea. And then we will play a little bit with that idea. It's, it's very necessary also to, to think about these, these things because excellent ideas, average group, I think would be uh, uh, not as good as an average idea and then the excellent, excellent group. So I would like to ask you now if you can, five minutes each, present your cases. Uh, multitrophic means that there are as, uh, more species involved from different trophic levels and um, on the same food chain. So we thought about rearing tilapia and because there is plenty of room at the bottom, uh, it is possible to also have catfish at the bottom. So the catfish will be just down there and uh, above the catfish there will be the tilapia. So that we have two species and maybe if the tilapia start to breed, then uh, the catfish can also feed off of the fry. And that way, for example, we could use another fish food that is um, appropriate for the tilapia. And then because the catfish is eating the fry, it's also appropriate for the catfish. And then we can go with cheaper food maybe. Okay, aquaponic system. We thought about having different grow beds with a large variety of uh, different plants. And one idea was to have an NFT, uh, a deep water culture system on stands so that we have more room underneath to do other stuff. And Ragnar had the idea to put some very small shrimp into the deep water culture. And these kind of shrimp, they just feed on, on algae and whatever. So that would be uh, cleaning the tanks and cleaning the roots. Maybe with the benefit that the roots don't get clogged up. And um, maybe it's beneficial for the plants. The solids of the system would be fed to red claw crayfish. There has been uh, some research by Ragnar that they really um, grow well on the, on the solids from the aquaculture. And so they would be another source of income. And therefore we, we would have to make the sedimentation tanks larger so that we have more area um, to rear uh, these critters. The remineralized nutrients will just go back to the hydroculture. So um, by remineralizing the sludge, we keep the nutrients in the system. We're, with the, uh, we're hoping for the effect that um, the plants will grow better if we don't discard the sludge. There are remaining solids and the, the biomass from the plant production and maybe some food waste from the municipality. We could compost and have a worm farm. And the worms are good as fish food. So we reduce the input of fish food. And it's known that um, the red worms, they're really good fish food, the fish like it. And the compost, we could either sell or we use it as a substrate for the mushrooms. And we're going to put the, the mushrooms under the grow bed because that's where we have the space. And it must, must not be the, the champignons it could be any type of mushroom. It, we just would have to figure out how to grow them and what grows best. Okay, so you see that's a very complex system. This is where we usually are with the aquaponics and we all know it's like, yeah, what's going on? And it's difficult to balance. And now we are adding a lot of uh, other um, cycles. So this becomes really complex and difficult to design and also difficult to put numbers on it. So we thought it might be a good idea Oh, I would just say how, what, 
what the revenue side of it is. This, is, this was the production side, so how are we going to uh, sell it? The, event, uh, the idea is to have food events with different high-end chefs. They come in, there's a weekly event where they cook and it's going to be announced and then the chefs, uh, they will request different crops from us. So they might say, okay, I've heard of this plant, it's really nice and interesting, I would like to cook with it and then we would try to put it into the system and grow it. That keeps the weekly event um, interesting for the customers, for people, so that they have a good incentive to come back uh, more often. Um, then we would open source the recipes. So when people like what they have been eating, they will buy the veggies and buy this stuff from us. But because we are using many different plants in the system, um, we could say that, okay, now we only have this amount of the fruit or of the vegetable left. So the diversity means that we add more complexity to the system and we try to make that into a positive, to make it into a, a good thing by generating scarcity. We just, if a chef says, oh, I want to have this plant, we just put it into the system with a limited amount and then if people like it, they want to buy it and then we generate scarcity and by that, may, we might be able to uh, demand higher prices for the products. Um, it's a complex system and one method to uh, conquer complexity or to deal with it is to, to divide and conquer. It's just uh, you cut it into different um, parts and then you work on each part uh, separate. So we thought about having five stages and um, also use this, that as an advantage. And then if we start with a, with a simpler system and then add more components to it, we can keep telling a story. So people come back every week, we tell them the story like, yeah, now we have an idea to add this to the system. Um, this is how we are gonna do it. And then when we've done it, we can tell the story and be like, okay, this worked and this didn't. And it, it's all exciting. And by having the different phases, we can um, keep the whole system interesting for the customers. Those were the different phases. We would just start with a multi-trophic fish system, the hydroculture, and then with a red claw crayfish. Because we need the bigger tanks for the clay crayfish, it doesn't make any sense to keep them out of phase one because then we would just have bigger tanks with a bigger investment. And so we included the crayfish in phase one. The second phase would be just adding the, the small shrimp into the um, DVC grow beds. That's just a small step that has a little financial impact and that should be easy to achieve. So once the system is running stable, we can just introduce them to the grow beds, make the story out of it, and then see how it's going. The next step would be to set up the warm farm and to start composting uh, the stuff we are producing by ourselves. That can also be done maybe with one module in a, in a small scale. And then if we figured out how to do it, uh, we can, um, make it bigger and add more modules and then start composting the food waste. And by doing this, if, if we ramp up the worms the, for the fish food, we are gradually reducing the fish food input into our system. And as the Regie pointed out there in France, there is a tax on, fish food, uh, on, on food waste that you have to pay if you want to get rid of the waste. And maybe there would be a way to just get the fish, uh, get the food waste for free by just taking away the tax burden from, from the people who are producing the food waste. So this would be for, for free, ideally, and then by composting it, we get uh, fish food at a very um, low price. And then the compost can be sold, and if that runs, then we can just add the, the mushrooms, and that's, that will be phase five. We have not discussed the time frame that I think it would be just like we, when we, we, we finish one phase, it will, you will take a look at the system and once everything is stable and everything is nice and dandy and running, you just turn to the next phase. And that can keep on going. We just follow it through to this point, but in the future you can just add more products and, and maybe during doing that you get more ideas on, on what circles could be closed and what could be added to the system. 
Uh, regarding the numbers, we found it very difficult to come up with actual figures or, or cost estimates for almost every part from the greenhouse to the tanks. It's hard to get prices. So we made a rough estimate and there, it was also very difficult to get an initial uh, estimate on the size we would need. So at some point in the discussion, we just said like, okay, let's just go with 10 cubic meters and 100 square meters and then j let's see where we end up and then maybe in the next iteration, we know that we need a bigger system a, or a smaller system than we would iterate in the uh, business plan. Um, we tried to make some estimation on, on this uh, system. Um, fixed cost, just above 100,000. The idea was to build most of the system for yourself because then you can also tell more stories to the customers on how you build it and how difficult it was instead of we just bought an aquaculture. And um, the variable costs were um, at roughly 90,000 and the turnover estimation is slightly positive at a little bit higher, but that's only rough estimate. So you see the, that the variable costs and the uh, turnover is really close together and the variable costs are without the financial costs. So we would have to uh, get a loan for the 100,000 for the fixed cost and then that would add to the variable cost. So you see there is not a lot of margin in it. And then uh, in an estimate for phase two, Ragnar discovered that just by adding the shrimp, we can sell them as ornamental animals and they are really high value and, and easy to rear. We are upping up the, uh, the turnover to over 100,000. So maybe it would be uh, a good idea to include the shrimp just in the first phase to uh, have a bigger turnover. But that was also a key moment when you discovered like, okay, if I do this, it gets much better. Or if I do something else, it gets worse. And then we also discussed that maybe we can just go and produce shrimp and forget aquaponics. Maybe that's the better <laughs> idea. Okay, that's the presentation of the project. The project. company name Latix and the circular brand of uh, uh, what we're thinking. And the problem is that we have all these fish farms, 270 of them, that um, puts a lot of waste into the fjords and the rivers in Norway. And uh, the idea is that we're going to um, clean or take the nutrients from the land-based fish tanks and use this as a resource and a fertilizer for vegetable production. And uh, when we do this, we will create a more sustainable production method for vegetable farming and make the fish industry in Norway a lot more sustainable. Um, but when we come to the customer segments, we were thinking about the private sector with the restaurants, Bama and co-op, and the public sector, like hospitals and canteens. And uh, uh, when do we go to the... And this, is, and this is just for selling the vegetables, so we're only yeah. involved in the vegetable production side of aquaponics. Yeah, that's right. We're there. not doing the fish, we're just cleaning the water, basically. From so there. we're using that problem as an opportunity to... Yeah. And we're thinking that we... Uh, by going into two different sectors, uh, we will have uh, have the the uh, we would distribute the risk, the risk yeah, yeah. for the company. If you're only into Bama and sell all your produce to Bama, if they all all of a sudden say we're not going to deal with you anymore, then you don't have any backup systems or or any other markets to to go to. So that's what we were thinking. If we work with hospitals and canteens and maybe restaurants too with the same produce or, or what they want, then then it's not going to be as risky if we, as if we take put all the eggs in one basket, I guess is what it's called. And the value we would get to the customer would be that it's locally produced, uh, not necessarily uh, like in within the village or whatever, but we don't need to source vegetables from Spain or South America or 
and stuff like that. We would reduce the import. It would be spray free and we would have a sustainable, sustainable production and it will be consistent all year round. And another, I don't know, like it's also made by making the fish farms more sustainable. So we're, we're saving the environment a lot of um, trouble. And then we're thinking about the customer relationship. We will primarily have a dialogue with the big distribution. And we already have talked with Balma and have a communication going on with them. What they want us to produce and maybe look into research areas from them. What kind of produce do they want that can function in an aquaponic system? And run this side by side when we do the pilot project. At the same time, only doing like uh, customers like Balma would be very cost, uh, costly because they will set the standards if the, if a salad head is not 100 grams, they're not going to take it. So, so yeah, it will. Uh, it would help to then have the secondary private and public expansion to deliver whatever is not suited for bomb on in a way that it's not good but not suited for their standards uh, and then we have to do the distribution and marketing ourselves so that we need to think about that will be will be costly in, a, in another way then um, yeah, that's what we were saying. Bama has already developed a distribution for the channels. And then the restaurants and public, we would have to create our own system and do our own marketing. And uh, here we have the, the resources. Um, and we use the wastewater from the fish farms to produce vegetables. And there's also, we've been looking into a bunch of different stuff that we could connect to this, like uh, collecting CO2 from the fish tanks because when it's this scale it's going to be a lot of CO2. Collect that and put it into the greenhouses or the industry buildings for the vegetables to create a better environment for the vegetables. And there's also produced a lot of sludge in these tanks, maybe like 40,000 40, tons a year of sludge. So if you could take this and put it into bioreactors and create heat for the greenhouses and the industry buildings, it would reduce a lot of our costs that way. And we could also sell the demineralized uh, waste that's left in the tanks as uh, fertilizer for the, for the farmers. And also when we come to the resources, I guess we would also need uh, skilled staff and I was also thinking that we would like to have like separate systems for the aquaculture and the hydroponics part so that you're actually reducing your risk by being able to cut it off and produce um, the vegetables separately like a hydroponic system in case of yeah the fish is sick or the plants get sick or so you're uh, dependent on being able to run the systems uh, separately so that you reduce risk and even if you get in trouble with your what we're talking about the business model if the fish companies want to cut us off we can still run our business like hydroponics with hydroponic solution just you know to be able to move around and find other solutions of course the best thing would be if we could could uh, uh, make good relationships so that doesn't happen. So we need to think about that too. And then uh, when it comes to our key partners, uh, we've been in touch with this um, uh, producer of uh, it's trout in the ocean, in the big nets cages in the ocean, and they want smalt, so they're actually thinking about investing in a big smalt facility, and this is where we're going to get the nutrition from in a couple of years and then first we're going to have the pilot project and then we have Innovation Norway which pitches in on new enterprises that's newly developed and then it's Bama taking a big part of the produce and then it's this municipality yay <laughs> of Stura which, <laughs> which uh, help us out both financially financially and with a lot of uh, knowledge and consultant, 
consultancy for free uh, just because they want to develop a lot of new uh, work uh, areas in, in their economy. And then we're looking at the revenue stream. We did, uh, this is the one that I had from my original. Um, um, this is for Thanks. And it's, uh, uh, this is a lot lower result because we, in the original business plan, uh, um, budgeted with a lot less production. But this is the, the eight, uh, 800 thousand that we had yesterday is with what we actually could produce out of the amount of fish feed that we put into the system. And still we, we have, uh, this is 40 kroners per kilo, which would be 10, uh, 4 euros, 4 pounds? Four, about 5 euros. 5 euros a kilo. Uh, and this price we actually got from Barma, this is what they pay for green kale and salad mixes and stuff like that. Um, and then we have eight employees, and uh, yeah, what else? And we found out that it, it think it's like thirty percent of the cost will be power, electricity for lighting and heating, at least. And when you come to the cost structure or the revenue streams, the first six months, I would guess we would need like two hundred fifty thousand. Euros credit just to kickstart the project and be able to take our costs before we actually start to make an income, which is very important so we don't you know, get bankrupt before we <laughs> the big bloodbath <laughs> before we make any money. And then also for growth, you see 2018, 19, 20, 21, getting into more uh, agriculture farms producing from those two, and this could be in dif different ways, maybe we could franchise the concept and uh, create more workplaces and more businesses around the country in different areas. So this would be an accumulated uh, result the, from all the different That's features. in the third year, wasn't it? Is that right? Yeah. What's that? In the third year that you were going to do that. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah not, we were going to keep it simple and then expand to three, four, five more farms around the country. Uh, yeah, I guess that was it, wasn't it? Was there anything else you wanted to add? Fishies. <laughs> 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 Okay, so my name is uh, Leif and my colleagues uh, Isaac and Enrique and um, just to say in the beginning, you know, people are so stressed in our world today, so let's uh, just have a few seconds for silence and calming down and just feeling weak and I will wake you up, so just, just start. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, um, this is quite necessary to have a, a time where you just calm down and relax to get new energy. And this is also a part of uh, the Japanese aesthetic uh, Wabi Zabi. And so we, we are called Wabi Zabi Wasabi. <coughs> And uh, so, as you can see, our product is wasabi, it's our main product. And um, it's like very fresh wasabi, this is especially um, because, uh, you know, when you get to a restaurant like a sushi restaurant and you want to have this wabi-sabi feeling, something is always disturbing you while having this feeling because um, the wasabi is it's not real fresh, it's, it's uh, kind of fake wasabi and um, 
to round this whole feeling up, you, you have to have fresh wasabi. So um, it's, it's very hard to get it and we think that uh, there's more wasabi needed. And uh, <coughs> to provide this, we, we want to produce it in aquaponics. And it's, it's as well a very, very healthy um, product when it's, when it's provided fresh and um, <coughs> it's very um, good yeah, for your health. So, second product in the, in the fish part is a uh, Japanese eel called unagi, which is also eaten in um, sushi. And uh, so it's it's also like smoothing, smooth movements like uh, very slow, and as well as <coughs> the the wasabi is growing quite slow and um, yeah just communicating this this kind of feeling. Um, yeah, just to to go on, um, I would like to hand over to yeah. Enrique. Yeah. So. So, we started to think, who are our customers for our products? We came up with two target groups. First, the sushi retailers. These include store owners or sushi chefs in high-quality sushi restaurants. And the other target group is slow food movement uh, enthusiasts. People that like to take their time to eat, take it easy, enjoy the real flavor of the food, and not be rushed when uh, in this enjoying the product. How would we connect with our customers? Uh, so the channels, how would we reach them? We were thinking about handing out free samples to um, the retailers of our product so they get to know it and they can see its value and why they need it. Uh, to target the slow food uh, movement enthusiasts, we're thinking about origami shaped flyers in the shape of an eel, or maybe the wasabi. Um, and these would be distributed in slow food communities, uh, events, and uh, gatherings of that kind. And we would also like to have a presence in food fairs, so that the people that come, whether they're just customers that want to, that like sushi, or whether they're chefs, they can taste it there, buy it, and see what we are all about. But it's not enough just to get the customers. We also have to keep a good, healthy relationship with them. So we were brainstorming a bit about this, and we were thinking that we should always diversify our product. So we may be building slightly different versions of the wasabi or of the eels, but never going away from the main philosophy of the two main species and the two main uh, products and the movement, the whole feeling fresh, feeling healthy, being slow. We also were thinking about recipe books. This we, we could uh, outsource the, its um, writing. We could hand it out to our some of our customers. And we were also thinking of having a YouTube channel and a blog that connects with the recipes so that people can access them. Uh, we were also thinking of having some guided tours so that some of the retail uh, owners, the on the sushi chefs, could come to our place of, my, of production see how we do it and why it's so fresh and also direct customer support because they might uh, have a problem and they need the wasabi urgently maybe we can do something that <coughs> will help them guide them through this process and what if, how do we actually going to build our system this is the main overview of our system it is a decoupled aquaponic system with two temperatures and an aeroponics component instead of hydroponics components. Um, with this system, it would be we would need require three thousand square meters polytunnel slash greenhouse building, which means that we can both keep it closed or keep it open regarding of the temperature by changing the cover to to use plastic sheets or just nets. Um, this would allow us to produce 670 kilos of wasabi, or about 11,000 plants, and also 500 kilos of unagi eel, or about 750 eels. Now, I'll give the word to Isak. 
Yeah. <coughs> um, now we have to talk about uh, the numbers. Um, so in order to make our dream come true, we would need an initial investment of 175,000 euros. That is uh, infrastructure and also, um, yeah, it uh, includes starting costs as well for the first year because we will not be producing, uh, selling any product for the first year and a half. Um, and the variable costs will be about 125,000 euros per year. That includes 100,000 euros estimated for the, for labor. <coughs> and in the first year, since uh, yeah, in the, in the first year, in order to balance the books, we will produce um, letters as a while we are cycling the system and when we are uh, because we want to be able to harvest wasabi every month so we need to start out by planting in 118th wasabi in 118th of the system and then slowly uh, yeah planting month after month mm. and now the revenue and profit for, for the first year, we will make about 80,000 euros from the lettuce and we estimate that the sales will be about 200,000 euros per, per year for the wasabi when we are starting to harvest it and 11,000 euros per year for the eaves. <coughs> the price for wasabi in Europe is for fresh wasabi is about 300 euros per kilo, and the for the eel is a, is at least 22 euros per kilo. And yeah, then for the first uh, year we will make a we estimate that we will make a net loss of about 60,000 euros. But then in the second year we will make uh, about 60,000 euros, so it will balance up, and that is including depreciation on our property. So now I want, to, want you to close your eyes, relax, breathe, and come help us harness the true power of nature. <laughs> Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Anthony, and here is Sofia. And here is our aquaponics reality show project. And we think this is a really great idea because every, everyone from, from this room needs to do more advertise the aquaponics to the general audience. So we decided uh, to go through the aquaponics reality show and to explain in more details. So why should we make a show on aquaponics? Because here we can see already existed project, uh, for example, the health kitchen and the farmer wants a wine, or the reality role, or for example, American inventor or bomb, not born stars, born stars, and these kind of reality shows. What we think about is, it's that our aquaponics show has more influence than these kind of reality shows. So why we should make it this kind of reality show? I think it's because it's from the educational point of view, it's it's a very very clever idea to, to make some show like like this one. And yeah, here's all the benefits. Yeah, educational at, at the same time motivate the system sustainability because the European one of the European Union goals is to be more sustainable and educate people how to be more sustainable and yeah, the, the main aims is with the cooperation with the science and the competition and the drama. And yeah, we just want to try to get the message to the common people. So even though the concept of aquaponics is spreading, it's still a bit of a closed group. 
So through like shows like this one that reach, reaches everyone, uh, we could teach and entertain at the same time. So the storyline, like even though we could get lost in details here, we're just gonna go briefly through the storyline. Like participants would possibly be recruited from uh, all European countries. And in every show there will be a competition related to aquaponic stuff, like we've mentioned before, like plant made function and the group fi uh, quickest to fix it would win. Uh, it could also be a cooking competition, it could be fish filleting competition, it could be anything related to aquaponics. And if it's uh, more versatile, it would be more fun and more interesting. And like in other shows, winners get awards and the losing teams risk elimination. And the performance of the teams is evaluated by a committee of experts and possibly other uh, show guests. And then one team wins a uh, money award and prestige. And viewers uh, could participate through voting, making them uh, more committed customers. So our goal is to make some, some pilot session. It will be like a testing period for three months. And it was a good, good idea from, from the LS to start with the YouTube or internet channel for the pilot session. If is it possible to make it real uh, in real life? Um, yeah, that's that's it. That's our goal. And here's the relationship with viewers. Yeah, we want to reach the viewers through extensive marketing, and we would need much more research to uh, do a demographic evaluation of the viewers. But we would want to have them uh, involved through voting, building a relationship with the viewers, and we would want to have an interactive website, so the viewers can have a chat forum. There would be more information. There would be extra material, and yeah. It was the idea from from the media. I, I think that there's already one reality show that is done. That if the viewer wants to see the reality show live you, they should pay it a small amount of the money and they can see the 24 hours per, per day what the participants are doing in the reality show and see the drama between them yeah. and through the show we want to motivate them uh, to be more sustainable and alert them of the crisis we are facing we are running out of uh, sources We're running out of sources and uh, we implement, for example, the stuff Vala was saying yesterday through, through the show in an entertaining way, making the information available for everyone. Yeah, it's, it's like storytelling if you can see from the beginning of the creating of process how the participant building, building the aquaponic systems and how they trying to, to solve the problems with I don't know, with the pounds and, and flowing and, and so on and so on. So it it's really can be really connected with, with the viewers. And through the show we encourage uh, viewers to give to charity related to the cause. Uh, so we'll be advertising also other work that's being done on the field. Okay, is it a bad thing, expenses and resources? It will be very costly. And honestly, we have no idea because this is completely new for us. Yeah. So just try to figure out how it could be. This is a way. rough estimation, but we figured our main expenses would be marketing and salaries. Then other costs would be lower, but there's probably something we don't know about this, so we're going to study this further. Yeah, but the latest idea what we have about the salaries is that it could be done in the like in the students' project way that we can hire uh, the students from from the IT universities, marketing universities, and all of these kind of universities to involve to to the aquaponic reality show to make it more well less in the we have ideas of uh, ways of income. Uh, we would want to have sponsors, and the sponsors could advertise on the web page. And we could 
this being a show, if we do the marketing right, we could sponsor anything. Like we could have the awards from the competition sponsored and like it would be an advertisement, so we'd get money there. If the participants are having a nice evening, opening a beer, the beer could be sponsored, the clothes could be sponsored. So we have a goal of 10,000 euros in sponsoring per episode. And the voting, SMS voting, would also bring an in income. Uh, we're hoping to get some funding. Uh, we would look into private uh, investors. And the web page could bring in money. Uh, the open access way could bring in money. And further online advertisement could also bring in money. So if all our expectations become real, uh, the total income is here at the bottom. Yeah, and although this is a question about the open access way, how we tried to, to, to explain, I think, yesterday, and that the institution and the universities pay a little, little amount of the money to get involved in, in this project. So there is a lot of educational institutions in the whole of Europe, and they do all of, mainly, mostly, of them paid this amount of the money. It can be good income for for the show. So we would want uh, sponsors to cover some of the expenses, and we would uh, want to save salaries through internships and volunteer work. So our expected income in total would be this one there, 281,000 euros. But there are of course risks and concerns. Uh, the marketing would be expensive and difficult and we don't know if it would work, but we would try to do it thoroughly. And the open access way is new and risky. Uh, and this concept might be a bit hard to sell to the general public, but that would also be addressed through uh, professional marketing, we would get good marketing people yeah. <laughs> to do that for us. So. so here are the activities and next steps. Uh, how we said this is completely new for us, so we we should involve more experts uh, and create some profile on weavers and definitely select the location and infrastructure uh, to, to rent it because uh, in the beginning we don't have money to, to buy it, so the idea is just to rent some already existing greenhouse or, or infrastructure and uh, get involved sponsors and investors. About the future plans, so yeah, the definitely plan is to make a full session and sell the TV show to the TV stations and increase global interest in aquaponics and collaborate with European goals and mission in making the world more sustainable. And, <coughs> and we want to do this because storytelling is important. Yeah, it could be quite nice. Yeah. Well, happened. Thank you. Thank you.